Well, let's go to that new report out today that every Australian on the centre right of politics needs to read. It's called Generation Left, Young Voters Deserting the Right. It's just been published by the Centre for Independent Studies. And it gives a bit of chilling insight into Generation Z's aversion to the coalition. Uh, this is a demographic change that could have devastating consequences for future centre-right votes in this country. Joining me now to discuss the report is the author from the Centre for Independent Studies, research fellow Matthew Taylor. Matthew, welcome. Take us through the findings in tight you. summary form. What's, what's, the, what's the headline statistics here? Well, it used to be that the coalition could rely on voters to shift their support towards them as they got older. And that was certainly true of Gen X and the, uh, the boomer generations. They, when they started voting, they were a few percentage points less likely to vote coalition. But by the time they got to their early 50s, they were as likely to vote uh, coalition as the average voter. And then they increased their support from there. Um, so most recently, boomers are 15 percentage points more likely to vote coalition. And Gen X are sort of basically following the same trajectory, but they're a bit younger. So they're about two percentage points more likely. But millennials and Gen Z look very, very different. Um, it, it seems with the millennials, we are shifting our support towards the coalition as we approach our 40s, but we're doing it at about half the rate that boomers and Gen X did. Mm -hmm. So the way our generation's going based on current trends, we're not going to be much help to the coalition electorally until we enter our 80s. But Gen Z just look fundamentally different to every generation that, that's come before them. They entered the electorate with historically low support for the coalition, and they've moved in the other direction. There's no indication that they're um, shifting their votes towards the coalition as they enter their mid-20s. One of the defining the, things that has often moved people to the right, Matthew, over time has been home ownership. That's getting harder and harder to attain for younger people. Did that show up in your data? So that's not something that I've looked at specifically. I plan to do future research to try and unpack how it is we got here and what we what we can do about it. But I think the um, I think the home ownership issue is definitely going to be part of the story because something we know about millennials is as we approach our 40s where our rates of home ownership are significantly below that of the Gen X and Boomer generation at the same age. Um, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of uh, literature in political science across a number of countries that shows one of the factors that shifts you into the sort of the centre-right camp as you get a bit older is the accumulation of assets and home ownership in particular. How much has education got to do with this? Because if you plot the, the, that time there, uh, boomers, X, millennials, and I think a real degrading of education from the millennials and on, that's where I'd argue the institutions have been picked up and now controlled by the left. That's almost a parallel with your findings. Yeah, it's interesting you should say that. There was a, um, a piece of research published in one of the top economics journals, I think it was earlier this year, that their argument is that what we're seeing isn't so much an age effect in voting, that it's really a, um, a rate of higher education attainment effect. Um, and obviously, millennials and Gen Z are some of the most highly educated um, generations, far more so than, um, than boomers. I mean, I don't know if, if that's... to what extent that's the story in Australia, because I think Gen X were mm. also had quite high rates of tertiary education, and their voting behaviour seems to basically have followed the boomers' lockstep um, from about the age of 30. I think... I'll give you a tip there, Matthew. I think it's the quality of the education. It's not just the attainment of the piece of paper. And I think uh, I declare I'm an ex. Mm. Uh, the quality of my higher education was, was contested ideas. It was debate. All the things that universities used to foster. They're a long way away from that now. And I think that's part of the problem. So it's not just attainment. It's what you're learning when you're there and the quality of the, of the teachers and the scholarship. Have to leave it there. Got a busy night ahead of us, but uh, I look forward to more research in this area.